Hello everyone, this is Paul and you're watching Maytech. Today I'm going to show you how to make these laser cut Halloween lanterns. Before we get started, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please make sure to do so and make sure you hit that notification bell to keep updated on all my latest videos. Alright, let's get started on how to make this spooky lantern. So here's what you're going to need for this project. The first thing you're going to need is some 1 8 plywood. I'm using birch plywood. You're also going to need the hardware or electronics to light your lantern. I'm going to show you two different ways of doing this. One is with these color changing LEDs that can be controlled with a remote. And the other is going to be with a more traditional mini bulb lamp system. For the mini lamp system, you're going to need a little mini socket. You're going to need one of these threaded tubes. Some washers and nuts that will fit the threaded tube. A lamp wall plug with a switch on it and whatever mini bulb you want to use in your lantern. I will go ahead later and show you the effects each one of these little bulbs gives the lantern. You should be able to get this stuff all at your local hardware store, but I'll also provide some links in the description below so you can buy it online if you need to. Let's have a quick look at the files for this project. I have this project set up in three different Inkscape SVG files, which have been laid out for my particular laser cutter. So you'll obviously have to lay this out for what works best for your machine, unless you want to use my particular exact layout. I'll provide a download link for these files in the description below. Just a quick note that you're going to have two different sets for these larger circles here. One is for the traditional mini lamp bulb, and the other is for the LED system. So depending on how you set yours up, you're going to have a set left over. Here we're going to have a look at the second SVG file. And here's the third and final SVG file for this project. Just so you have the measurements, these particular files are set up to 450 by 280 millimeters. Okay, let's go ahead and we'll cut all these files out. Now that we have all the elements cut out, let's go ahead and assemble this project. We're going to go ahead and assemble the base or the legs of this lantern first. What we need is four of these legs, and we'll also need four of these larger circles. Now, if you're going to go the traditional mini socket route, you'll want to use the circles with the smaller hole in the center. If you want to use the LED system, you'll want to use the circles with the larger hole in the center. Some masking or painter's tape, and some wire. Just a quick note that because the plywood I was using was varying a lot in thickness, I did lay out these slots a little loose. Because of this, this project's going to fit together loosely, which is going to make it a little bit harder to assemble. So you might want to adjust the slots to more tightly fit the material you're using. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble the LED base first. We're going to take these larger round circles and we're going to slot them into the four slots at the base of the lantern. Once that's done, we'll connect each one of the three legs, like so. We're now going to loosely secure this base by placing some masking tape around the bottom. Now, let's go and assemble the base for the more traditional mini socket. Once again, you'll want four legs. But this time you'll want the larger circles with the smaller holes in the center. And you'll also want the electrical hardware for your mini lamp. We're going to start by taking one of the larger circles and inserting the threaded tube into it. We are then going to secure the tube in place using a washer and nut on each side of the tube. Once that's done, we're going to take the mini socket and screw it onto the tube just like so. We're now going to take that circle that we just installed the socket on and we're going to clip it into the upmost bottom slot on the lantern. We are then going to clip the other circles into place below this socket. And we'll go ahead and add the rest of the legs just like we did with the other base.
Once that's done, we want to loosely secure this lantern base by wrapping some tape around the bottom. Now we're going to take the end of the lamp cord with the exposed wires and thread it on through the base of the lantern like so. Now you'll want to use some pliers to pull out each one of the exposed wires until it's touching the screws on each side of the socket. You can now take a screwdriver and loosen the screw off. Wrap the exposed part of the wire around the base of the screw and retighten it with your screwdriver. You can now repeat that process on the other side of the socket. Once that's done, take the little cardboard insulator and place it back over the socket like so. You can now insert a bulb into your socket and plug it in and test to see if everything's working. We're now going to go ahead and assemble the cage or I guess the shade for the lantern. You're going to start by taking five of these smaller circles and slotting them into the side of each lantern panel. Once that's done, take some painter's tape and secure each one of the circle discs onto the side, like so. We're now going to repeat this same process for all the other side panels. You now want to take your wire and thread it into the center hole on each one of the corner circles, just like so. Now once you've secured your lantern corner to corner like this, you want to leave it fairly loose to make it easier to assemble into the base later, but you can now go ahead and remove the tape off each one of the corners. At this point, we're going to take the lamp cage and mount it into the base by aligning the corner sockets on all the circles with the upper sockets on the base. Now this does take a little bit of finessing, but everything eventually does fall into place. Now go ahead and take this large circle and clip it into the top of the base. To finish, we're going to take the top panel and slot it into the top of the lantern like so. Now that we have the lantern all assembled, I've went ahead and secured both the top and the bottom tightly with some wire. I'm just going to be using some CA glue here or crazy glue. And I'm also going to be using an accelerator with that just to get everything to dry and set fast. You also may want to use some of these disposable gloves so you don't end up gluing yourself to your project like I'm prone to. Now we are not going to go and glue this top panel on because we do want access to be able to change out our bulbs or be able to fix anything inside the lamp. With your lantern flipped over, apply a little bit of glue at each one of your socket joints. You can then spray them with some accelerator to get the glue to instantly set. Now that I'm done gluing, I'm going to let this sit upside down a little bit just to make sure it dries. As this is drying, I'm going to go and assemble the base for my other lantern that already has the socket in it. 
I'm not going to show this procedure because it's exactly the same way as we've already glued this one. Once your glue is all set, you can go ahead and now remove all the securing wire from the bottom and the top. We're now going to go ahead and mount the LED components into the lantern that we have set aside for the LEDs. I've went ahead and placed some double sided tape onto the bottom of the LED light and it's this tape that we'll be using to secure the LED light onto the base of the lantern. So let's go ahead and take the backing off the double sided tape. Now I have two wires coming off each one of my LED lights. This is so they can be daisy chained together. We're going to take the end with the male socket and thread it through the bottom of the base, just like so. We're then going to press our light into place, making sure that it's securely mounted with the tape. I'll now go take the other wire that's attached to the light, and I'm just going to tuck it into place on the side of the light, just like so. And we're just going to leave it there so it's easily accessible in case we want to daisy chain other lanterns together with this one. Once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and attach my power supply and test everything to see if it works. On this remote, we have a bunch of different features like flash, strobe, fade, and smooth. There's also options for a white light and for dimming the light. You also have the ability to change the light to a blue, green, or red. And you also have a selection for 12 other colors. And of course there's options to turn the lantern on or off. I've went ahead and placed the LED lantern into my light box here. And we're just going to quickly run through all the different options on the LED system so you can get a better idea of the type of effect that it gives the lantern. Now we have the lantern that has the traditional mini socket installed into it placed into the light box. What we're going to do is place some different bulbs in it so you can get a better idea of the effect each bulb will give it. So first we're going to use one of these little colored bulbs here. Next we're going to use a small LED bulb. And last we're going to use this high output LED bulb. Here we have the lantern with the colored bulb installed. Next we have the lantern with the small LED bulb installed. As you can see, it does a very excellent job of projecting the shapes that are cut into the side and top of the lantern. And last we have the large high output bulb installed. As you can see, it's an extremely bright bulb and it gives an effect kind of like a large room lamp. Well that's it for this video. If you liked it, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please make sure to do so. And make sure you hit that notification bell so you stay updated on all my latest video releases.